Hey there, is today your first time here? Or maybe your first time in a while? If so, maybe you're wondering exactly who we are and what this church is all about. Well, we'd like you to know that we're a group of ordinary people who are on an amazing journey together following Christ. Our guide is the Bible because it's the divinely inspired Word of God and it will never take us in the wrong direction. So welcome to church. Hallelujah, hallelujah. The names of God. We've been focusing on the names of God and not just as a teaching on what names are from a theological point of view, but we are focusing on the question that Jesus posed to his disciples because he asked them, who do people say I am? And then the deeper question was, who do you say I am? And as we've gone through, and we're still going through this, this journey about God the great I am, I really am asking you, who do you say he is? As we speak on these little things, as we focus on the different names as, as we focus on understanding the different names. We, we started the journey on Al Roy, uh, Jehovah Roy, the God who sees. And we, I did this specifically because most of us, there there's are times that we think that no one sees us. We, we feel as if we're invisible, depending on what's going on around us. But God sees me. And then the following week, we spoke about Jehovah Shammah. Understanding that God is there. He, he not only sees, but He's there in every situation that I am in. God is with me in that situation. When I understand that God is with me, he is also the, the God who is Je Je Jehovah Titskunu, Jehovah my banner, Jehovah my victory, Jehovah the standard by which a life has victory. He is the standard. He is the banner that is over my life. And if I'm living out of that victory, if I'm living in such a way that my life is about living from victory to victory, then we are living in an understanding that I can't do it. I have no way of being in right standing with God. And Jehovah Titskanu is there with me. He is my righteousness. He is my righteousness. Sorry, the banner is Jehovah Nissi. Jehovah Titskinu is my righteousness. So he is the banner that is over me, my victory, Jehovah Nis Nissi. Jehovah Titskinu, he is my righteousness. Jesus died on the cross for me so that when God looks at me, he doesn't see all my stuff. He sees his son. When he looks at me, he sees me as his son and daughter because the son paid the price so that I could be in his presence. So when we understand that God has done all of this, this leads me to, to today's um, thing because if we want to acknowledge who he is and acknowledge what he's doing. I'm trying to show you the path that God has done. And this is something that God has revealed to me. The way I taught the names of God previously has been very different to the way I'm teaching on this today and during this time. If I think of Jehovah Makedesh, he is the God who sanctifies me. God sanctifies me. So God has made me righteous, and then God is calling me, He is sanctifying me 
to himself. So there's a whole process. God sees me. God is with me. God is giving me victory. God is protecting me out of that victory. He is with me in every situation. He makes me in right standing with me and with him. And then he calls me unto himself. God is calling each and every one of us. If I look at the truth of this statement, God is the one who sanctifies. God calls me. It doesn't matter what my excuse is. It doesn't matter what I'm saying about it. It doesn't matter. The truth of the matter is God calls you. God calls you apart. The word sanctify means set apart. And we're going to get into it a little bit deeper. So God is the one who calls me apart. God sanctifies me. You have been called apart. If I understand that, many times we don't feel that we're good enough to be called by God. So my heart issue has got to get to a place that it aligns with what the truth is. The truth is, God has sanctified me. So now I've got to embrace this. I've got to understand that He loves me, and because He loves me, He has set me apart, and I must surrender to that process of God calling me apart. And what we will see, what will be recognizable in your life, is a life that is surrendered to God. You will be seen as a person, no matter where you are, your life will be shown as, I live out the fact that my life is set apart unto God. So if we start understanding what this means, what is being set apart unto the Lord. What does it mean? What does it mean? I, I read a story, and it was such a beautiful story. It's a story of this little girl coming back from uh, church one morning. And she's coming back from church, and she speaks to her mom, and she says to her mom, Mom, I'm, I'm really confused about what the sermon was today. And the mom asks, why are you con confused? And she said, the preacher preached that God is a huge, massive God. God is awesome, amazing, bigger than what you can ever think. And the mom says, yes, that's true. He says, but he also said God is in me. So the mom said, yes, that's true. But if he's bigger than me, won't he show through? If God is bigger than me, won't he show through in my life? Will he not be seen? So, we have to understand that God calls us, He sanctifies us, He makes us holy. So the word holy and sanctify is from the same root word. So whether somebody is sanctified, set apart, we're going to get a little bit more into that explanation, set apart, set apart, holy is also set apart. So when we talk about holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, we are declaring that our God is set apart. We are declaring it, and if God is asking us to be holy, God has already told you that you are holy. God has already declared you sanctified. So you have the opportunity to embrace what that is. And when I was thinking about how do we explain this, how do we so we take something that is very common. It is something that is used on an everyday basis. And I have a pen that I make all notes for in the kitchen, in my home, in wherever. 
then I take this pen and I sanctify this pen. I declare this pen holy unto the Lord. This pen may only be used in an act of worship unto God. This pen can only be used in the work of God. This pen can only, it can't be used for making normal kitchen notes anymore because it's been sanctified. It has been set apart from what it was doing and it has been set unto the Lord. So what is very important when we understand this, we, th there's two aspects of it. We are set apart from something and we are set to something. You and I need to understand God has, he has done it. He has set you apart from sin unto himself. Say amen. amen. Okay, so that is the truth. What you do with it is then up to you. So if we start looking at how God showed us this and how he expressed it, the only way for me to really give this to you, I'm going to give you quite a bit of scripture this morning. Because this is really something, the book of Leviticus is the book where we are taught how to, the people of Israel were taught how to walk with God and how to worship God. So many times we look at the book of Leviticus and it's like, it's a boring book. We, you know, but if we think about the book of Leviticus as a recipe for how to walk with God and how to worship God, if we focus on reading the book of Leviticus with a different heart and a different mindset, then it's not reading rules and regulations, it's reading how do I engage with God? How do I live a life where God shines through? God is showing through me. So if we look at it, Jehovah Mekadesh was the God who shows a redeemed people, the people of Israel. He brought them out of Egypt. He redeemed them out of their situation, out of slavery, and he brought them to their promised land. He was redeemed, they were redeemed, and they were brought out of to something. So Leviticus 20, verse 7 and 8 says, Consecrate yourself, therefore, to be holy. The word consecrate means dedicate. Dedicate yourself to be holy. Consecrate. Consecrate. Make sure that you make every effort that you can to be holy. Dedicate your life to be living a life separated to God. Dedicate your life. That every moment that you live is living as unto the Lord. Be holy for I the Lord God, your, for I am the Lord your God. Verse 8. And you shall keep my statutes and perform them. I am the Lord who sanctifies you. So when we read this, there's a very important aspect to see from be holy, it's dedicate, be holy, live it. Keep my rules and regulations. In the New Living Translation, it says, So set yourself apart to be holy. For I am the Lord your God. Keep all my decrees by putting them into practice. For I am the Lord who makes you holy. And we drop a little bit further down in the, in the Bible. Uh, Leviticus 20, verse 22 and 23. You must keep all my decrees and regulations by putting them into practice. Otherwise, the land to which I am bringing you as a new home will vomit you out. Do not live according to the customs of the people I am driving out before you. It is because they do these shameful things that I detest them. So God is calling us to be holy. God has declared us righteous and he's declared us his. Now he said that to you. That's who you are. Then he says, come and live it. 
The only way that you will be able to experience who God is, is by living out what God wants you to live. And that is the Word of God. Now, the Israelites didn't have what Jesus had done for them. They didn't have that. You and I have that. So we know that we cannot keep the rules and regulations to be righteous. We can't do that. But God is now showing us, in order to be set apart as His, keep the regulations. You're not being declared righteous, and you're not working to be righteous. You are declared righteous. The price has been paid. You are righteous. Now, because you are righteous, and God is saying to you, you are holy, now my answer to that is, I will live so that God will shine through. And the way I live so that God can shine through is by keeping his decrees and his statutes. If I keep his decrees and statutes, God will shine through. If I don't, I will be vomited out of the plan that God has for me. The plan God had, the promised land that is there for me. God is calling me and this is, he is made a way, he has chased out all the enemy that is in front of me so that I can have this plan for me. He has called me to fulfill a plan. Every one of us have been called by God out of the world unto him so that we can fulfill his purpose in and through our lives so that he will shine through because we are living in that, away from the world into what God has called us, so that we will fulfill that calling. We will live in that which God has called us to. If we don't, we will be vomited out. You see, there's a wonderful road ahead for you. God's got such a road of blessing for you. But in order to walk in that blessing, you have to listen to what His Word says. You see, if you are sanctified, you have to live sanctified. And the word we use is that we grow in our relationship with God. The sanctification, the process of walking with God is what we call sanctification. But you need to know that sanctification only happens because you are sanctified. Boom. It's done. Now out of what is done, I live in the process of sanctification, which changes me. So that I am not vomited out of what God has in store for me. God is calling every one of us. New Testament, 1 Peter 2 verse 9. I use this scripture often when I'm sharing with you because this scripture is a scripture that I love. It's a scripture that really means a lot to me because you are not like that. The description of you are not like that. The description before this, Peter is talking about all the stuff that's wrong. All the things that shouldn't be. And he's saying, but you're not like that. For you are a chosen people. You are a royal priest, a holy nation. God's very own possession. I want you to think about that for a second. When God sets you aside, when God sanctifies you, you become his very own possession. You, Michael, is no longer used in the world, in the common things of the world, Michael has been set aside to be living in the presence of God, living out of the victory of God, living in the righteousness of God, living in the holiness of God, being sanctified by God so that he will shine through. So that as a result, you can show others the goodness of God, for he called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. 
I am called out of what I was into God. That's sanctification. That is what it means for you and me to be holy. When we talk about holiness, the, the image that people have about a holy person, that snob, nose in the air, a Bible the size of a suitcase, and walking around as if he floats, that's the image that we have, you know, you holy. You holy. But that's not God's thing. That's not what God says holiness is. You see, man always corrupts the beautiful thing of what God is. The world corrupts it. So God is calling us to be holy and sancti sanctified unto him. And the world corrupts that and makes it look all weird so that when you're there, you're going to feel foolish about being holy. But it's not foolish. It's not about what you look like. It's not about how you walk. It's about who you are. Have you given your life to God? You see, when you give your life to Him, that's what it means. That every part of my life, and you know what? Yes, I fall down. I mess up and I don't get it right, but I get up again immediately, and I ask 70 times 7, I ask for forgiveness, I go to the Lord, and I do it again. And I do it again, and I grow in the process. You and I are called out of the world's way of doing. 1 Corinthians 6, verse 9 to 11, it says, don't you realize that those who do wrong will not inherit the kingdom of God? Don't fool yourselves. Those Now listen to this list. Okay, listen to this list. Carefully. <laughs> listen carefully. Okay. Don't fool yourself. Those who indulge in sexual sin or who worship idols. Now most of us don't, we, we don't worship idols. Nay. Well, what's first in your life? What is the most important thing in your life? Anything that you place above God, above your relationship with God, but I'm not placing. Are you spending more time with God or more time with this other thing? Sometimes our debt becomes our idol because everything that we do, we live for paying our debt. We live for that, we're not living for God. Our focus, whenever we speak, whenever we do it, the first thing I have to do is I have to pay my debt off. We don't say the first thing I'm doing is giving to God. We don't, the first thing I have to do, when something possesses you more than anything else, if it is more important for you to do sport than to be with God, that is an idol. Whatever you are doing that becomes more important than your relationship with God, that is an idol. Don't fool yourself. Those who worship idols or those who commit adultery or a male prostitute or practice homosexuality or are thieves or greedy. None of us are greedy. None of us are greedy. None of us are greedy. Covetedness. Greedy. Covetedness. Are you looking at something and saying, I wish I had that? That's covetedness. Yo, if only I had that car. That's covetedness. We've got to be so careful. Yeah, but that's not a real sin. Okay, what did God say about it? It says, don't fool yourself. That is a real sin. Somebody who is greedy or covetedness will not see the kingdom of, of, of God. Greedy people or drunkards 
and here we go, or abusive people, revelers nor extortioners, somebody who cheats people, somebody who is abusive. Have you been abusive to somebody? Have you spoken abusively to somebody? Have you treated somebody abusively? Have you done that? Don't fool yourselves. Those who indulge in this will not inherit the kingdom of God. You see, it's very easy for us to be picky and choosy about what we want to accept and what we want to believe about the word. Yeah, he's telling us, don't cheat people. Because if you cheat them, none of these will inherit the kingdom of God. But some of you were like that. Some of you were like that once. But you were cleansed. You were made holy. You were made right with God by calling on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the Spirit of our God. Thank you, Jesus, that that list gets cancelled because His blood has covered me and washed away my sin. But guess what? Because I am now sanctified, I am righteous, I am holy, don't do that anymore. You cannot live like that and pretend to be a child of God. You can't be doing that and say, I belong to God. You don't belong to God, you belong to the world. Why? Because the Bible says that anybody that commits these sins will not inherit the kingdom of God. I'm not saying that. The word of God is saying that. And if you and I want to live by the word of God, don't do this. God is showing us what it means to be sanctified. That's why he says, we get it in Leviticus, Follow my rules and regulations, and I will be your God and you will be my people. But I've called you to be my people, but if you don't do these things, if you don't live according to the word, I will vomit you out of my mouth. I will vomit you out of the plan that God has for you. I will vomit you. God needs to understand, we need to understand that God has given this to us. We need to embrace it, hold it, and live out of it. That's what we need to do. So now we consecrate our lives. Is your life dedicated to God? Is everything that you are doing devoted as an act of worship? Do you hear that? Is everything that I am doing dedicated, devoted as an act of worship unto God. The way I treat my family, the way I treat my husband, the way I treat my wife, the way I conduct myself at work, the way I conduct myself wherever I am, is it seen as an act of worship unto the Lord? Is my life lived as an act of worship to the Lord? Leviticus 20, verse 7 and 8 again. Consecrate yourselves, therefore. Set yourselves apart to be holy, the New Living Translation says. Set yourself apart to be holy. Set yourself up, dedicate yourselves, consecrate yourselves to be holy. I will live unto the Lord. My life will be about living a life where God shows through. God is seen in my life. Is that our statement? Is that what we can say? Is that... Who do you say I am? Who is God to you? Who do you say I am? 1 Peter 1 verse 13. So think clearly. And exercise self-control. Look forward to the gracious, gracious salvation that will come to you 
when Jesus Christ is revealed to the world. Verse 14. So you must live as God's obedient children. Don't slip back into the old ways of living to satisfy your own desires. You didn't know better then. But you must be holy in everything you do, just as God who chose you is holy. For the scripture says you must be holy because I am holy. I want to share with you from the Amplified. The Amplified Bible just gives us a little bit of more. Verse 13 says, so prepare your mind for action. Sure. So think clearly. Prepare your mind for action. Be completely sober. In spirit, steadfast, self-discipline, spiritually and morally alert. Fix your hope completely on the grace of God that is coming to you when Jesus Christ is revealed. Verse 14, live as obedient children of God. Do not be conformed to the evil desires which governed you in your ignorance before you knew the requirements and the transforming power of the good news regarding salvation. But like the Holy One who called you, be holy yourselves in all your conduct. Be set apart from the world by your godly character and moral courage. Again, we've got this word moral. Moral courage. Verse 16. Because it is written, you shall be holy, set apart, for I am holy. Don't follow the standards of the world. Don't allow the world to contaminate what it means to be a child of God. We cannot pretend that we... My goodness. We cannot pretend. We cannot pretend that we are children of God because then the side door opens. You can't pretend... You see, because you can put on a mask as much as you want. You can pretend. But that mask will come off. Plastic people melt when the heat is on. And God takes us through a bit of heat so that the real you comes through. But if we don't want that, then we choose the easier way, the road that is wide. And e we choose that way because there's not so much heat on that. Then I can wear my mask, I can pretend, and no one worries because the life that I'm living is contaminated by the world system. The world system says you mustn't just be that way. The world system says if you take a bit of this, then you mix it with that, then that's okay. That's fine. Do not live according to the customs of the people I am driving out before you. God is setting a standard for us. 2 Peter 1 verse 5. In view of all of this, make every effort to respond to God's promise. And here is a very important part of scripture. Supplement your faith with generous provision of moral excellence. And moral excellence with knowledge. The word virtue is to do with my moral belief. What are the morals that I live by? We have people that are coming into the church and they are living together. We've got young people that are sexually active. The Bible calls them, they are fornicators. That's what the Bible calls it. It's not what I'm saying about it. The Bible says this. So when I'm dealing with young people and I say, you are sleeping together. Oh, you fornicators. And by, the Bible calls that a sin that will not allow you to get into heaven. You see, we've got to understand it's not okay. You know, try it out. You know, marriage, just try it out before you have it. You know, it's like, let's 
take this on APRA. Let's try the dress to see if it works. Or, you know, if it doesn't work, we'll give it back. Let's take this car on a test ride. I just want to see if it's okay, whether it'll be good enough for what I'm thinking of using it for. So we, we do test. No, God doesn't say that. God says you must live this way. According to what? According to the rules and regulations of the word. The beautiful thing about it, in the Old Testament, you had to live according to the rules and regulations to be right with God. In the New Testament, you and I are declared right with God. Now we must live according to the rules and regulations of God. The rules and regulations do not make us acceptable to God, but the, if we don't live according to the rules and regulations, God will vomit us out of the plan that he has for us. We've got to make a choice. It's not one foot in and one foot out and wiggle all about. There's none of that. You are either in or you're out. Remember I shared that thing about being half pregnant? You are either in, you are either a child of God, or you're not a child of God. That's what it is. You can't pretend that this is. The Vine's expo Expository direct, uh, Dictionary says this. Jeez, I nearly got myself. God calls people to belong to a friendship, he, to belong to him, and to serve him, to labor in the world. To serve him in the world. God calls people to belong to him and to serve him in the world. He sets believers apart. Holy, holiness, sanctified, sanctification. He sets believers apart, granting them access into his presence, bestowing upon them forgiveness, freedom, grace, and favor. That's what we have from God. He has created us. He has chosen us. He has called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. And therefore, I must be like him. Because as he is holy, I must be holy. And we all know we cannot just... Why not? Have you not got the Spirit, the Holy Spirit in you? So I have the Holy Spirit in me. You've got the Holy Spirit in you. I've got a different Holy Spirit in me to what you've got. No. There's only one Holy Spirit. Holy. Set apart. One Holy Spirit. And Jesus himself. The Spirit, he is in you. It is no longer I that liveth, but Christ that lives in me. So that is in me. Is he shining through me? Well, I don't know how to do Well, the Holy Spirit is your helper. God gave him to you so that he will endure you with power. The Holy Spirit will give you all you need so that you can live as Christ in you with his faith. That you can live that way as God has called you to live. You see, you are called to live in a certain way, but we don't. We don't answer the call. How many times have you called your kids? And they don't answer. Then your tone changes. You see, children understand the tone. So when the tone changes, then they know no. <laughs> but we can still push it a little bit. And then there's a special tone that they can't push. Then they must respond. They are called, and they must respond. You have that same call. I have that same call. God has called, but God only calls with one tone. He's called. That calling stays. That voice has been spoken over you. It's done. It is finished. You are called to live a life separate from the world unto the Lord. That is what you're called to. Now, are you doing it? 
Am I living my life the way I should? Am I living in that way? Because I need to understand, even before he made the world, Ephesians 1 verse 4, God loved us and chose us in Christ to be holy and without fault in his eyes. God has called us to be that. Are we being that? God has called you to be holy and without fault in his eyes. You can choose to live that life or you can choose to live a different life. The choice is yours. You can choose. I am no longer dictated to by the things of the world. You know, the, I talk about the geit, you know, the lekker geit, that, that lekker geit. Sin is lekker. If sin wasn't lekker, you wouldn't do it. So sin is enticing. Sin draws us away from what God wants us to be doing. And many of us feel that we are controlled by that enticement. Romans, uh, Romans 6 verse 16 says, Don't you realize that you become the slave of whatever you choose to obey? If I choose to obey sin, I become the slave of sin. You can be a slave to sin, which leads to death, separated, separation from God. Or you can choose to obey God, which leads to a righteous living. Verse 17, thank God, once you were slaves of sin, but now you are wholeheartedly, say wholeheartedly, with everything that was, is within me. Everything that is within me. I am obeying this teaching which has been given to me. Okay, you said it, eh? Verse 18. Now you are free from the slavery of sin and you become slaves to righteous living. Hallelujah. God is making a way. And of course, if I've done, Rome, I've got to go back to Romans 12. We, we keep on coming back to Romans 12 from verse 1. And so, dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you to give your bodies to God because of all he has done for you. Let them be a living and holy sacrifice, the kind you will find acceptable. This is truly a way to worship him. Verse 2, don't copy the behaviors and the customs of the world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect, and you won't be vomited out. You see, we have to understand there's a consequence the consequence, to li consequence of living right with God is spending eternity with Him. The consequence of not living right with God, of choosing the, the, the wide way, of choosing a way of living that is not following the Word of God, it's one foot in or one foot out. No, I'm, every, I'm on the fence. I'm doing a bit of this and a bit. I'm finding my own way. When you do that, you will be separated from God. You will not see the kingdom of God. You will experience death, which is separation from Him. We don't realize who we are when it comes to this process of being sanctified. 1 Corinthians 19 says, Don't you realize that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who lives in you and was given to you by God. You do not belong to yourself. You're not your own person. If you have asked Jesus into your life, if you've asked Jesus to be the Lord and Savior of your life, you do not belong to yourself. You were bought with a price. And that price was the blood of Jesus Christ. He paid the price. You do not belong to yourself. You belong to him. Now, because you belong to him, live like you belong to him. No, but that's a battle, eh? 
Isn't it a battle? It's a real battle that we have every day. When we listen to how we should live, it's a battle. And I want to share something with you that I think is a revelation for all of us. We leak. When we thought we were okay and we were full, and then the next day comes, then we, we're not so okay. And we, we're not okay. Yeah, we were like, yes! Yeah, we're like, oh, what happened? We leaked. Whatever we had here is gone here. Matthew 6, verse 34. So don't worry about tomorrow. For tomorrow will bring its own worries. Today's trouble is enough for today. It doesn't say maybe. It doesn't say perhaps. It says today's trouble is enough for today. You will have trouble today. You will have it. And 2 Corinthians 4 verse 16 says, That is why we never give up. Though our bodies are dying, our spirit is being renewed every day. So yeah, I am called to live unto the Lord. I am called, yes, but I don't feel like it. You're leaking. It's okay. Understand that you've got troubles. I listened to this uh, a talk by um, uh, John Piper, and he was talking about this, and it was such an amazing thing. He, he referred to Lamentations 3, verse 21 and 20, to, to, to 23. Yet I still dare to hope when I remember this. What am I remembering? I'm hoping because I remember this. The faithful love of the Lord never ends. Hallelujah. And His mercies never cease. Well, that's awesome, eh? Great is His faithfulness. His mercy begins afresh each morning. So every morning, I've got trouble. Today's trouble is enough for today. You have trouble today. You have got lots of trouble for today. But it's only for today. And I have mercies for today. And I have new mercies today. And I'm getting renewed in the spirit every day as I seek the Lord. I'm renewed in my spirit day by day. And his mercy is new every day. And I get enough mercy for the trouble I'm experiencing. So don't get tomorrow's trouble today. Don't go there. Leave it there. You'll have mercy there. You can't borrow mercy there. But you can borrow trouble. Because that trouble can become part of what you're thinking. But you've got enough trouble for today. But the mercy is new every morning. And God's mercy is enough for the trouble. And I'm renewed every day by Him. By seeking Him. By seeking Him first, early in the morning. By spending time with Him. And when I hit the trouble, I am living out of the victory because Jehovah Nissi is with me. He's in it. He's there. And he has set me apart. That this trouble for today will not overcome me. Because I'm not getting vomited out of God's plan. I'm letting God shine through in the situation that I'm in. And I will show the world who God is through my life. Amen. It's time for us to understand what this all means. You and I, in the process of sanctification, we are growing. Ephesians 1, verse 17 and 18. Asking God, the glorious Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, to give you spiritual wisdom and insight so that you might grow in your knowledge of God. As I grow in my knowledge, I am growing in the process of being holy unto the Lord. 
That is sanctification. I grow in the knowledge of God. Verse 18, I pray that your hearts will be flooded with light so that you can understand the confident hope he has given to those he has called. I am confident. I've got hope. Why? Because my mercy I have every morning. It's new. And when trouble comes, I am being renewed. I'm getting more. It's okay. Bring it on. Because God is bigger. God is bigger. He has given to those he has called. His holy people who are his rich and glorious inheritance. The the most important thing for us to understand. We have a calling of hope in our lives. And it's all about the riches of the glory of our inheritance that we have. But God is calling us that we will be enlightened. And how are we enlightened? By spending time with Him. So that the spirit of wisdom and revelation and knowledge of Him... We have more of that. The more we have of that, the more we grow in. I say, okay. Guys, you need to understand God demands holiness. I want to, I want to share this with you. I, wa I want you to know this. You can never be holy in yourself. But God demands holiness. So the only way to do it is to get into. Get into that relationship with Him. You see, there's no if and but and maybe with God. It's just this way or just that way. There's no give and take. You either are or you're not. He does this in relationship with him. He's busy in me, allowing me to grow in knowledge of him. And as I grow in knowledge of him, I start understanding what it means when God says a certain thing to me, when I start reading it, when he says to me, I am called out of darkness into his marvelous light. I start understanding what that means. It's not just darkness and light. It's about understanding that the world's way of doing th things leads to darkness. It leads to separation from God. It leads to death. The world leads to death. But the light that God has for me, that is my inheritance. Walk in the light as He is the light. We have to choose the little gate. That little gate, we have to choose it. We, we, can, we can easily walk on the wide road, the highway to hell. But it's time for us to understand God has a beautiful... But on the little road, you, you, you can't walk the way you would walk on the wide road. This, the tackies you wear here, don't function here. You have to have a different set of tackies. And the tackies that you need here come according to this. You can't pretend... To be a Christian. You can't pretend to be a child of God. You can go to church, you can do all those things, but God knows and sees your heart. God knows what's going on. But if you're a pro person that is going through the process of growing, the process of sanctification, what I was, the way I was 30 years ago, and the way I am today, is very different. The person I was there was a person that my wife didn't want to be with anymore. To be honest with you, I didn't want to be with me anymore. But God changed my life and our lives. And that's why I can stand in front of you today. Because I didn't do it. It was God who called me out of darkness. It was God who sanctified me. It was God who declared me righteous. It was God who made a way where there seemed to be no way. It is God that has given me his word, which is a lamp 
unto my feet and a light unto my path. It is God's word that shows me how to be a husband, how to be a father. It's God's word that shows me how do I conduct myself without being corrupted by the things of the world. God is not lenient when it comes to this thing. We are often lenient because that's the way. God is not lenient when it comes to this. Choose this day whom you will serve. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Amen. Let's bow our heads. Father, we thank you. We honor you. And we glorify you because you are the one who sanctifies us. And yes, Lord, we thank you that it begins at our salvation. The day we say yes to you. The day we answer that call. The day we recognize that it is the Holy Spirit that is convicting us of our sin. So we respond to that. That nudge, that pull on our heart that we have a place that needs to be filled and nothing in the world can fill that space it is only filled by you and we continue every day seeking more of you growing in our relationship with you growing in fellowship with the people around us understanding what it means to forgive and understanding what it is to be forgiven. And thank you, Lord, that you have done it all. We just have to answer the call. We have been set aside. Now live that way. We have been called to grow in the knowledge of who he is. I pray that your hearts will be flooded with light so that you can understand the confident hope he has given to those he called. His holy people who are his rich and glorious inheritance. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. I'm warning you ahead of time, dear friends. Be on the guard so that you will not be carried away by the errors of these wicked people and lose your own secure footing. Rather, you must grow in the grace and the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, all glory to him both now and forevermore. Thank you, Lord that you have made a way, you have given us your word. And every single one of us has to respond to this call. You have called us unto yourself. You have called us to be yours. You have called us to be your own special people. If you've never responded to God's call, if you've never acknowledged it in your life, if you've had God's call and you haven't honored that call, you haven't lived the way you should, just in your heart, right there where you are, say, Jesus, I need you. Forgive me. Show me by your Holy Spirit how I must live. Take control of my life and lead me in your way. Father, you know the hearts of every single one of us. You know the intimate heart, the intimate inside of us. You know it. And your word cuts so deep into the heart between marrow and bone it, it's right in the innermost being of who we are the word shows and reveals 
where we need to change, where we need to grow, where we need to let go. Thank you. Thank you, Lord, that you are making a way for each and every one of us. Thank you, Lord, that we can just surrender our lives unto you, that we can let go and we can let God and we can say, Lord, I need you. I recognize that today's trouble is enough for today, but your mercies are new every morning. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your grace that is allowing me to be renewed every day by day by day. Thank you, Father, that even though my body is dying, my spirit is being renewed. Lord, I need you. Father, I need you. Holy Spirit, I need you. In Jesus' name. And we all said, Amen.